Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how to do the honeycomb method on a tapered tumbler. The honeycomb method consists of using just one size of rhinestone and positioning each stone in between the cracks of the stones in the previous row. The way they fit together resembles a honeycomb. This method is systematic and gives a very neat and tidy look. Typically, the honeycomb method is used on straight tumblers, and you'll see the scatter method more often on a curved tumbler, like this wine glass I have on the left. But the honeycomb method looks great on a curved surface as well. There is more than one way to do this, but today I'm going to show you a technique that doesn't require any filler stones. You can use just one size of rhinestone for the entire tumbler. I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step. Today, I'll be using light rose AB stones in the size SS20. My favorite glue for rhinestone projects is called GemTac by the brand Beacon, and I transfer it into a precision tip bottle. I use a wax pencil that can be sharpened to pick up and place my stones. Links to everything are in the description. I'm using this rose gold champagne tumbler. It's very important for this method that the color of your tumbler matches the color of your rhinestones as closely as possible. Before you begin, sand the surface of your tumbler all over with some sandpaper. This will rough up the surface so that your glue and your rhinestones can adhere to it better. Once it's sanded, give it a wipe with some rubbing alcohol to remove the dust and any dirt or oil that could be on the surface. Start by applying a thin line of gem tack around the bottom edge of your tumbler. Use your wax pencil to pick up and place a line of rhinestones side by side all the way around the bottom edge as tightly as possible. If you get to the end of the row and you don't have enough space for one more stone, just do a little bit of nudging to get the stones all spaced out as evenly as possible. Don't leave a gap anywhere. This first row will set your foundation for the entire tumbler, so make sure you get it as perfect as possible. Set your tumbler upright on a table and press down to make sure that the stones won't interfere with the way it sits. Once you're satisfied with the first row, apply a second line of gem tack just above that row. Place each stone in the cracks between the stones in the first row so that they sit evenly and the tops of each stone are lined up nice and level. Each and every row of this tumbler will have the exact same number of stones, and because of the tapered shape, the stones will slowly get more and more spaced out as you work towards the widest part of the cup. Then the spaces will shrink again as the cup gets narrower. Apply a third line of glue and place the stones in the cracks between the stones of the previous row. Continue checking your work to make sure your lines are perfectly even as you work up the cup. At this point, instead of doing lines of gem tack, I switched to applying dots of the glue since I knew exactly where to place each stone. This will help to keep your work cleaner and help you waste less of your adhesive. Make sure your glue dots are big enough to spread out across the backs of each stone as you place them. You'll be able to kind of feel if the stone is stuck on well or not. You may have some visible white glue spilling out between your stones. Don't worry, that's completely normal and it will dry clear when it's done. You don't want a huge mess of glue, but it's better to use too much than too little so that none of your stones fall off. So now I've reached about the widest section of my tumbler, and the stones in this row will have the most space in between them. As I continue working up the cup, the spaces will start to shrink. The gaps aren't huge, but they are visible, which is why it's important for the color of your tumbler to match the color of your rhinestones. Another thing to note is to make sure you do each row all the way around the tumbler as you work your way up. If you work all the way up to the top of the tumbler in just one section and then try to continue across, your spacing will get all wonky and it will not look very nice. I learned that the hard way. So always complete the full circumference of a row before moving up to the next one. GemTac is a very forgiving glue that dries slowly, so you should be able to nudge your stones around and make adjustments as needed. You can even remove your stones and wipe it off completely if you really mess up. 
Make sure you're keeping an eye on everything and being as even and level as possible, making adjustments as you go. The scatter method is beautiful and I do use it in most of my other rhinestone tutorials, but there's something extremely satisfying about the honeycomb method. There's a place for everything and everything in its place. It's really exact, but you just follow your pattern and it becomes kind of mindless. The scatter method sounds like it should be easier because there's more freedom and artistic license, but I'm such a perfectionist with it that I find myself doing a ton of rearranging to get it perfect and it takes me forever. There are pros and cons to both. I would love to hear from you in the comments which method you prefer and why. Once I got to the very top, I did the last two rows kind of at the same time just to make sure that they were evenly spaced to meet with the top of the cup. You might need to adjust the vertical spacing just ever so slightly to make sure you don't leave a gap at the top of the tumbler that's too small for one more row, but noticeably big. You want to leave a gap just small enough that it doesn't interfere with the way the lid fits on the cup, which you can test as you go and make adjustments if you need to. And that's all there is to it. Once you're done, you can let it dry for at least a full week before washing it. After those seven days, you can use soap and a bristled brush to scrub off any glue or wax residue and make your stones super sparkly. I have a video tutorial showing how to wash a rhinestone tumbler. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later.